In this episode, we're going to build a text translation feature in Angular 4, and we're going to do it completely in the background using Firebase Cloud Functions and the Google Translate API. This example is going to take a string of English text and translate it to French, Spanish, and Arabic. We're able to make this work using the onWrite callback from the Firebase database, which will trigger a cloud function that handles the entire translation process. In other words, we're going to build a microservice specifically for translation, and we're going to trigger this microservice to run every time new data is added to the database. The first step is to model the data. In this case, we just have a collection of translations, and each translation has a set of key value pairs where the key is the language and the value is the translated text. So the user will enter the text in English and then the cloud function will write the data in every other language that we want to translate. The first step is to allow the user to input their text to the Firebase database. So we'll start building that in a service. The service only needs one function called create translation. It starts by pushing the user text to the database then it returns that as an object observable so we can update the user interface asynchronously. Now we can start building the component. First, we define a variable for the user's text and then we define another variable for the current translation, which is the observable returned to us from the service. Then we create a handle translation function that will trigger the entire process when the user submits their form from the template. I'm also creating a default message helper that will tell the user when the cloud function is running in the background. It'd be a good idea to replace this with a loading spinner or possibly a progress bar. In the template, we start by creating a text area, then we can use ng-model to bind it to the user text variable that we defined in the TypeScript. Then we create a button and attach the click event to the handle translation function. Since our current translation isn't observable, we can use the async pipe to unwrap it asynchronously in the template. In this case, we use the question mark to safely access the attributes before they've been defined, otherwise an exception would be raised. And we also use the OR operator to display the default message if the translation is undefined. Now we can start building the cloud function. If this is your first time using cloud functions in Angular, you'll need to run Firebase init from the command line. From there, we'll need to install the necessary packages in the cloud function environment. I'm using Lodash to make the JavaScript a little more readable, and also using the request promise library to send the request to the Google Translate API. Make sure you're in the functions directory, and then run npm install. In the index.js file, we start by importing the necessary libraries. Then we run exports.translate to name our actual cloud function. From there, we make a reference to the database location that we want to trigger the function. Then we call onWrite to run this callback whenever new data is added to the database at that particular location. Next, we create a promise for each language that we want to translate. We build the promise by making a request to the Google Translate API through this URL here. The URL itself needs the source language, the target language, and the text itself. When we send the request, we need to make sure to resolve the promise with the full response. If we get a successful 200 response, we convert the response to JSON and then use the translated text as the data that we'll use to update Firebase. 
the final step is to update the Firebase database as an admin user. And if there's an error, we want to throw that error to make sure it shows up in the cloud function logs. If we go back into the app, now we can see that our data is being updated and we're getting translations back from the cloud function pretty quickly. Looks like about 300 milliseconds for the function to execute. That's it for this episode. If you found the video helpful, please like and subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, consider becoming a pro subscriber at angularfirebase.com. For just a few bucks a month, you'll get access to exclusive content as well as free one-on-one -on -one project consulting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.